Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Michael Montero from the Montevideo Studios, I'm your able captain, haha, <laughs> with my headphones, they feel so amazing and um, they record very clear and nice voice, I love them, uh, big shout out to where they came from, I'm a happy person, you know? yeah so today we are at chapter 17 sharpen your skin analytical skill sharpen your analytical skills that is the chapter 17 um heading and subtopic says one should never impose one's view on a problem one should rather study it and in time a solution will reveal itself that was albert einstein often i feel frustrated when i am thinking about something said the scientist and banker lord lothchild a fellow of the loyal society and first director of the british government's think tank he was he was he said a good analysis but not a truly creative thinker. Synthetic thinking, creative thinking, if you like, is a high order altogether. People who think creatively, creative, creatively hear the music of their spheres. I have heard them once or twice. Not Rothschild in is obviously correct in believing that we all have different profiles of strength and weaknesses as a thing as thinkers creative thinkers are clearly stronger in synthesizing imagining and holistic thinking than others but the best of them are equally strong in analyzing ability and the faculty of valuing and or judging it is this combination of metal strength supported by some important personal qualities or characteristics that make for a formidable creative mind. All these abilities, analyzing, synthesizing, and valuing are at work when you are attempting to think creatively in some phrases in some phrases all passages of the minds work one will be more dominant than the other two but they are never wholly absent what is partly why creative thinking cannot be broken down into a process as a psychological analytics have constantly attempted to do still less a system it is not a stately procession from analyzing to synthesize to synthesis and from synthesis to evaluation uh, the nearest approach to identifying an underlying process is the one made by Graham Wallace in 1926. He proposed that the germination of original ideas passed through four phases. Preparation, incubation, illumination, and verification. Wow. <laughs> Now, this is oversimplified for creative thinkers. May not follow that sequence, but it is nonetheless a useful framework. The first characteristics of original thinking, according to Wallace, in a wide spectrum of field is a period of intense application of immersion in a particular problem 
question all issues. It is followed by a period when conscious attention is switched away from the topic either by accident or design. The incubation phase sometimes there follows a sudden flash of light, of, of insight or intuition, illumination that is, followed by a period when the idea is subjected to critical tests and then modified, the verification stage. My own perspective is slightly different. There is a conscious phrase when you are aware of predominantly trying to analyze the matter that has engaged your attention. You may play around with some some restructuring of, of it, that is synthesizing. Some valuing will enter into it. It is worthwhile to spend time on this project. Is it worthwhile to spend time on this project? Your imagination may also get to work picturing some of the obvious solutions that occur to you or their consequences. You may also be giving yourself advice or taking yourself asking yourself questions such as remember not to accept the first solution that comes to mind <laughs> or am, am i making any unconscious assumptions this faces corresponds to wallace to wallace preparation that is but that label is misleading because we may revert quite often to this conscious work of our minds when we are not so engaged these activities of analyzing synthesizing and valuing can continue but they do not do so invaluably at the level of our depth unconscious mind minds at the level of our depth unconscious mind we may then receive the products of such subliminal thinking in a variety of ways. The America poet Almy Lowell for intense says, I met them where they touch consciousness and that is already a considerable distance along the road to evolu evolution. For Far from this reception of an idea from the unconscious mind with the consciousness being the end of the story, it is only a halfway stage. During the process of working out, other fresh ideas and developments of a creative kind will still occur. Things are made in the making. This object of anal analysis is clarity of thought. For clear thinking should proceed accompany creative thinking. I'll repeat that paragraph again. The object of analysis is clarity of thought. For clear thinking should proceed and accompany creative thinking. What is the focus of your thinking? Is it some necessity, some everyday problem, or a resource that could be exploited in several different ways? If it is a problem, what are success criteria for any satisfactory solution? Check your definition of, a, of the problem. Are you rating symptoms rather than the, uh, the disease? There are, often, there are often several equally valid but not equally obvious ways of defining any problem. But 
each definition is a general statement of a potential solution to the problem. So different definitions are worth collecting the signpost for different avenues of thoughts. The definition you settle upon may have a powerful influence in programming your depth mind. If it leads nowhere, try another definition. Edward Jenner's discovery of vac vaccination illustrates how useful it is to be able to redefine the problem. At the end of the 18th century, Jenner took the first step towards ending the scourge of smallpox when he turned from the question of why people caught the disease to why daily maids did not the answer being that they were immunized by exposure to the relatively harmless cowpox two men were walking in the africa bush when they met a very hungry cheetah who eyed them ferociously. One of the men fished out some running shoes from his snack, snap sack and bent down to put them on. Why are you doing that? cried his companion in despair. Don't you know that cheetahs can run over 60 miles per hour? Yes, yes, he replied as he fi finished trying t t tying the, la the laces. But I only have to outrun you. Uh, the best advice is not to focus too strongly on any aspect of the problem. You should learn to think generally about it like a scientist scanning a problem area for clues. Let it speak to you. Whatever the ultimate object of his work, wrote Hazel Rossotti in Introductory Chemistry, the experimental chemist's immediate aim is to ask suitable questions of the sensible bodies he is studying and to let them answer for themselves. It is the chemist's job to observe and report the answers with minimal distortion. Only then can he attempt to interpret them. These attitudes, a proper detachment and objectivity are le relevant to creative thinkers in the conscious perhaps of their work. It is so easy to introduce subjective elements such as those, sub, those troublesome unconscious assumptions or constraints into the problem or matter and uh, review patient analysis and restructuring of the parts taking up different perspective paints in your imagination from which to view it. All this will deepen your understanding of the problem if they do not fairly soon release within you. Like a cash dispenser, the right solution or at least the right direction in which to advance. Interesting. We go straight to our key points, and this time around you have key points number f up to number four. Number one, the skill of analyzing, taking things to bits in order to discern underlying principles or idea is a key implement in the tool chest of a creative thinker. There is no standard process or system of creative thinking. There is no system that you can learn 
for creative thinking is essentially about freedom. To think freely means to set light to processes, systems, and drills. Key points number three, the best creative mind are those that have been subjected to various disciplines when young and then have reverted back to their natural proclivities Procrivi proclivities proclivities that is uh -huh, proclivities i'm gonna look for that uh, meaning when analyzing do not be over hasty in defining the problem play with alternative form formulation until one emerges which commands your support wow thank you so much that's the end of our chapter 17 which state what sharpen your analytical skill number 18 checklist problem solving and decision making that will be the topic for our chapter 18 and it starts with understanding the problems you need to understand the problem first and then towards solving the problem thank you so much that is michael montero reading for you the art of creative thinking by mr john adair what a beautiful brilliant mind that came up with all these amazing points authentic points thank you so much for tuning in remember if you if it's your first time remember to subscribe i'm your able captain michael montero from the monteville studios be blessed be shown your path be the light of others and always remember listen to that voice never doubt yourself your first instinct is always the right one okay this is your able captain mr michael montero from the monteville studios like share subscribe comment if you have to leave that message there i'm gonna reply and i'm gonna reply accordingly Thank you so much. See you next time. Peace. Peace. <laughs>